Hello and welcome back. Thank you for joining me. We're going to have a conversation today about purpose, our purpose here. You may have wondered at length in your life about your purpose, why you're here, what you're here to do, that sort of thing. There is plenty of talk about it. There are plenty of people in the world that can help you with this. It's one of these things that's very popular. It's a very popular topic on social media. What's your purpose? What's your sacred purpose here? Why are you here? That sort of question that we ask ourselves all the time. So today we're going to get an answer, capital A. Understand that this answer stems from chapter 14, section 4 of the text of A Course in Miracles. It is from the thought system of this course and not from another source. So to the extent that you find yourself motivated to practice, that's great. That is why I offer these videos, to share the Holy Spirit with you, knowing that something is going to speak to you, and that someone is your inner teacher, our inner teacher, who's speaking to you right now. When something lands, it's not this thing that's talking to you. Not at all. That is simply what it looks like on the surface. If you're new to A Course in Miracles, you will hear things in the next few minutes that you perhaps have not heard before. They may clarify what you've always felt and believed, or they may trigger you. So be it. Whatever it is, understand that all resistance that we hear experience on this thing that we refer to as the spiritual path is from the ego, this false sense of self that thinks it's separate from God. Impossible. You are not separate from God, and you are not separate from your brother. Rather, there is no separation of any kind. None. So let's talk about our purpose and what we are here to do. Let's start with the central teaching of A Course in Miracles. There is no world. You're not here. You are not a body. Rather, you are free. You're still exactly as God created you. Not fallible, not a perishable item with a highly limited shelf life. I know you know this. You could choose not to accept that, and that is your choice. No problem. Plenty of people do that. First of all, the answer, the first answer to the question, what are we to do here? Well, we're not here. We don't actually enter a physical body. All appearances to the contrary, all dictates of this world and our societies and our biology textbooks to the contrary. We do not enter a physical body. It's not who we are. And I know that you know this, or you would not have been interested in any way, shape, or form in this thing called spirituality. Plenty of people don't appear to be right now, do they? I mean, these may include friends and family members of yours. I think we can all relate to that. So let's start with this as the premise of what are we doing here? What's our function? Well, first of all, we're not really here. 
So while we appear to be here and we've managed to convince ourselves that we are here, what do we then do? Well, let's devote the remainder of the conversation to just that. The practicality of this course is paramount. It is a self-study curriculum, and we learn it by putting it into practice. Practical application in our daily lives, that's how we learn best. Listen, you can read There Is No World, and you can listen to a talking head, a pixelated image on your screen, assembled in a conglomeration of dots that make it look like a middle-aged man from Arizona. I mean, you could listen to that, say repeatedly, that you are not a body. There is no world. You could read that in A Course in Miracles. You could do the 20 consecutive workbook lessons that start with the central premise, I am not a body, I am free, for I am still as God created me. And you know that. But until you put it into practice, you won't really, truly learn it. It is in putting these ideas into practice that we truly learn. Our experience demonstrates the truth of the ideas to us. It shows us, and if you prefer this language from the world, it proves to us the truth of these ideas. Want proof? Fantastic. You should. Prove it to yourself. That's how you learn. This applies to me, just as it applies to all of you. This is how we do it. We're invited to accept what the Course refers to as atonement for ourselves. This does not have the same meaning in A Course in Miracles as it does in common parlance. Here in the world rife with violence, atonement carries a tinge of revenge and spite where we're appearing to get back at our brother for a harm that he has done to us or a harm that we imagine he's done to us. We appear to be exacting our revenge, our pound of flesh, so to speak. Any Shakespeare fans out there? Yeah. Right? We appear to be doing the eye for an eye thing. And as we do this, our mind is most unforgiving. This is not what atonement means in A Course in Miracles. To accept what we refer to as atonement for ourselves, we accept our inner teacher's correction, the correction stemming from the Holy Spirit. We don't see things as they are. We're learning to see them as they are. And our inner teacher is here to guide us, to direct our forgiveness. We accept this correction for ourselves. Central to this is the notion, the truth, that the separation never occurred. Central to our accepting atonement for ourselves is the acknowledgement that the separation never took place. You're not separate from God. You can't be. Does that resonate? Should. You can't be separate.
God, the creator, gives himself, only himself. That's all that really is. So, of course, that's all he gives. As we accept the correction of our inner teacher, we learn to recognize that we are guiltless. There's never been any separation of any kind. You're not a sinner. There's no sin. God has no ego to be offended. There is only perfect oneness. Therefore, how can there be offense when there's no separate other? Think about that again and again. Often, yeah. Allow it to undermine things if that's what it's doing for you. Yes. What you're shedding are your own defenses which are needless. In perfect oneness, there can be no attack. There is no opponent. There is no separate other. Remember, there's no separation of any kind. So here in the world where we appear to be harming each other left and right, we learn under the guidance of our inner teacher to perceive our brother's guiltlessness. We forgive him. We acknowledge that there's never been any separation of any kind. As we share the Holy Spirit with our brother in this way, as we extend love, he returns it, we recognize ourselves. Yeah, of course, our brother is ourself. Your brother is you. He's not your cousin. He's not your related blood relative. He's you. Brother is simply a term that we use here in the world with our symbology of language. We learn to recognize our brother's guiltlessness. And in that, we recognize our own. We extend love. This is the perceptual counterpart of creating in heaven, which is what God does. He extends himself. Here, while we appear to be here in the world, we learn to forgive. We learn to see things as they truly are. So we're already forgiven. We don't need to ask to be forgiven. Rather, we should ask to learn to forgive. No, learn how to forgive. Ask your inner teacher for guidance. As I say pretty much in every video, this is central to this course. Ask your inner teacher for guidance in learning to forgive. He'll point out every opportunity and give you the mental verbiage that you can use to pull this veil aside layer after layer, gradually as need be, lift it. Atonement, the correction of our inner teacher, becomes visible to those who use it. It becomes visible, tangible, to those who use it, forgive, Forgive, forgive. The veil will lift and you're lifting it. Atonement becomes visible to those who use it. This is our function to use it, to forgive. This is your sacred purpose. What 
could be more sacred than extending love to your brother and lifting the veil that covers your eyes? What could be more sacred than that? This is our function, to forgive, to extend love to our brother, and in so doing, awaken. This is how we do it. If you've ever wondered when or if awakening, enlightenment, realization, liberation will come, of course, this is how we do it. You can bring it about, and this is how it is done. So we're invited to allow ourselves to be led by our inner teacher as far as we're willing to be led today. And then tomorrow, we're invited to get up and do the exact same thing. Allow yourself to be led and guided as far as you're willing to allow yourself to be led today. For you, that may look very differently from someone else. And perhaps you feel that, yeah, I'm not really ready. Okay, that's fine. Allow yourself to be led, guided, as far along the path as you're willing today to go. Nothing, in fact, could be simpler than that. Because the truth that applies to all of us is that until we fulfill our function in the world, we will feel guilt. It is from failure to fulfill our function. That's where guilt will seem to arise from. So when we fulfill our function, the world looks differently. You may be able to say this unequivocally from personal experience. Exactly. That's how we do it, isn't it? If you have been doing this course for a long time, I invite you to think back to what your mind was like when you began. How is it now? Are you more forgiving? If you're not a course student, that's absolutely fine. Apply this to any spiritual tradition that you've been practicing here in this life. What were you like when you began? How are you now? Are you more forgiving? Are you more patient? More chill? How about that? Are you more of a kind person? Are you more loving, joyful? Do you laugh more? Atonement is made visible to those who use it. Yeah. We notice the loving, the joyful. It raises itself to a place of prominence in our mind. These are simple examples This is how it's done, and you are completely guiltless. If you're feeling guilt, well, fulfill your function instead. You'll notice when we talk about our function, our purpose, that it has nothing to do with what you do for a living. Not at all. If you have a career going on right now, keep it, yeah? This course does not say anything about changing careers or career paths or financial situations or financial paths. It doesn't say anything about that for reasons that we've covered here. First of all, this t course is teaching us that we're, this is not our home. There is no world. So why would it concern itself with 
manifesting a new career or a bigger bank account. If you do, fantastic. If you happen to enjoy a fulfilling career, a fulfilling, loving relationship, lots of money, any combination of that in this life, great. Not a problem. If you don't have it, again, not a problem. This course is a course in mind training. It has absolutely nothing to do with what appears outside of us. Its focus is not there. So it's not going to tell you your purpose in life is to do this career as opposed to that career, because there's no opposition. Do this, don't do that. And um, forgive the Son of God. That's our real purpose here. So this course is, well, it's a little different from all of those other traditions and modalities. Now, understand that this does not make it superior. Remember, there is no difference of any kind. So there is no gradation or hierarchy of superior to inferior. God is the creator. That's the only thing that would even approach that. But you're not inferior to him, nor are you separate from him. Not a one of us is, because God extends himself. Like extends, like extends, like. As we just talked about a few minutes ago, God shares himself with you. Always. So my hope is that this inspires you somehow to practice, to put these teachings into practical application, because I cannot stress enough, that is how we learn them. All right. So with all of these deep teachings, questions are bound to arise. That, in fact, is an integral part of the spiritual path. So I want to invite you to ask questions here in this discussion forum in YouTube, if you've got them. There is no such thing as a dumb question. There is no such thing as a base, a question that's too basic, too beginnerish. In fact, if you have one of those and you're afraid to ask it, that's the question you should be asking. And I'll tell you why. Number one, you can help yourself by asking, and you can help people all over the world, including long-time veterans of this course who have been studying and practicing this material for 20 or 30 years. You're asking a question, a basic seeming question, could be a catalyst for someone else to have an aha moment, one of these light bulb flashing kind of moments. It might be the 5,000th time that someone on the other side of the world has heard the exact same thing when they get it. So questions are always valuable here because you could positively influence the walk, the trajectory of somebody else on the other side of the world whom you're not likely to ever meet in person in this lifetime. And understand that when we say somebody else, that's a figure of speech. There is no one else. Your brother is you. Got questions? Please ask them. If you've not yet subscribed, please do that as well. These teachings are very deep. And well, they're so we can awaken which is what we all want. We all want the peace of God, whether we choose to acknowledge it or not. It's what we all want. It's why we're interested in spirituality. So if you are interested in this course, please go ahead and subscribe. This is the prompt here in the corner of your screen. To go ahead and click that arrow and join us. Thank you to all of you who have recently joined us. This community is growing. It's international. So I very much appreciate your being here. And more than anything else, I thank you for your dedication and commitment to practice, because that is 
hands down, the highest and best offering that you could ever give anyone, anywhere. There is nothing that even comes close to that. All right. So thank you for joining me. Questions, if you've got them. This is very deep subject matter. We're turning our perception right side up. So yeah, questions are bound to arise. Thanks so much for joining me.